Hey, what's going on guys? So recently over on my site, College Info Geek, I published a post on soft skills, which are important to learn for getting jobs and for doing basically anything in your life. And today we're gonna dive deep into one of those soft skills because today we're talking about how to become a more confident person. Now, I think a lot of people look at confidence as one of those qualities that you're either born with or not born with. When you look at one of those people who can just come into a room and absolutely own it, there's this feeling like, that person was born with that quality. They are just innately confident and I might not be that way. But contrary to that popular belief, confidence is indeed a skill that you can build. It's a quality that you can cultivate through deliberate action and through changes to your mindset. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video because you might not believe this, but a few years ago when I was early on in my college career, especially when I was a teenager, I was quite an insecure person and I didn't have a whole lot of self-confidence. Now, part of the reason for this was that when I was a teenager and when I was an early college student, I had really bad acne, like a terrible facial complexion and I almost felt like I had to wait until I grew out of that or grew out of puberty or whatever people told me would happen before I could be a confident person. I felt like I was worth less in public situations than I would be when I looked better. And as I've learned over the intervening years, that was absolutely not true but it's something that really held me back when I was younger. As you can probably tell right now, things have definitely improved and that is due partly to age, but it's also due partly to improvements in my diet and my exercise regimen. So keep that in mind if it's something that you're dealing with as well. But even before those improvements started to happen with my face, I was able to increase my internal self-confidence and decrease that insecurity I had through some changes to my mindset and through some challenges that I gave myself. Now, four out of the five strategies I'm gonna share with you in this video involve things that you can do relatively quickly to start building your confidence, or at least they were things that had relatively quick results for me. Two of them will be mindset hacks, ways that you can subtly start shifting the way you think about both yourself and the world around you, and two of them will be tactical actions that you can take immediately or very, very soon from now that will help to build your self-confidence. But before we get into those, we have to talk about the most important factor in building confidence, and that is that you must simply do that which you want to become confident in doing. Confidence is built through experience. But the key term that we should be using to talk about this here, and this really does make a difference, is relevant experience. You have to gain experience in relevant areas to whatever you wanna build confidence in doing. And this is something that Charlie from the channel Charisma On Command makes sure to stress in one of his videos on confidence. And I'm gonna be linking to that video at the end of this one because I think it's a good follow-up. But I really wanna dig into this term relevant experience because I think there are two main areas that are related to it. First up, we have the obvious one, which is direct experience. For example, if you're gonna go give a speech, the 10th time you do that is gonna be much, much easier than the first time, especially if the intervening nine times went well. As the former US Secretary of State William Jennings Bryan once said, the way to develop self-confidence is to do the thing you fear and to get a record of successful experiences behind you. And this is a dude who gave 500 speeches in 1896 alone, and he's the guy who basically invented the entire concept of the stump speech campaign. So he is the guy that puts his money where his mouth is when it comes to getting experience. Secondly though, and perhaps even more helpfully, you can gain experience in related areas because every single discipline in the world shares certain qualities with other disciplines. For example, even though I have only gone skiing about six or seven days in my entire life, I am able to ski double black runs. I can ski moguls, I can go up to the top of a summit and ski all the way down. I have a disproportionate amount of skiing skill for the amount of days I've actually spent on a mountain. And that is because at the beginning of this year, I started figure skating as my winter sport. And as I've discovered, serious figure skating and time on the ice translates surprisingly well to skill on the slopes, even though you've got big boards strapped to your feet instead of what are basically knives. To give you a more professional example, my ability to speak in public, both on a stage in front of a physical audience and for however many thousands of people watch this video through this video camera stems from my experience in podcasting. Now, podcasting is pretty different from making YouTube videos or from speaking in public because I'm just sitting in my room. There's no camera or, or eyes on me, but I'm still building my ability to speak clearly and confidently. And I podcasted for over a year and a half before I ever started making YouTube videos. And my experience as a podcaster, both interviewing people on Skype, but also just modeling 
monologuing like a super villain in my bedroom built a lot of those speaking abilities and my confidence to speak in public. So the lesson here is that you can find ancillary activities that can help to build your confidence and your skills in that main activity you're trying to get good at. But one word of warning here, don't let this tip encourage you to delay your first forays into that difficult main activity you wanna get good at because the stress of stepping up to something you're afraid to do is gonna help you progress faster than all of your practice time in the ancillary activities. And I'm gonna give you an example here that might bring back some feelings of nostalgia for some of you because when I was eight years old, I got my first Game Boy Color and the first game I got for that Game Boy Color was Pokemon Blue. And as somebody who chooses the objectively best Pokemon, Charmander, I had some trouble with the initial first gym because Brock is a rock trainer and fire doesn't do too well against rock, right? So my eight year old strategy was to just grind for hours and hours and hours in Viridian Forest and in the easy areas so that when I actually went and challenged Brock, I was so high level that I could just steamroll him. And I thought I was so smart in doing this, but I realized later on that if you have an easy time with the gym leader, you get no additional reward than if you just scrape by the, by the skin of your teeth. So later on, I would just get as good as I needed to be to beat him and then progress forward. And as I did that, I realized I could beat the game even faster because when you step up, you get the rewards faster than if you just stay in the kiddie pool area for much, much longer. So build your skills and confidence on those ancillary activities, but before you think you're ready, when you're still scared to do it, jump into that main activity. And it doesn't have to be crazy, right? As a public speaker, I wasn't giving hour long keynote speeches right at the start. Instead, I took speech classes in high school and then in college. And then from there, I moved on to joining Toastmasters, which is an organization full of people who just wanna get better at public speaking. It's really inviting and it's all about feedback and growth. From there, I moved on to an organization called Ignite, which uh, puts on events where you give five minute speeches on a very constrained topic, your slides auto advance, and you have to practice. And I thought to myself, that's something I can do. And I did that twice, which helped to build my skills even further. And now I'm charging thousands of dollars to give hour long keynotes, but it was a long and gradual path. All right, so now we are gonna move on to the mindset hacks that I talked about in the intro to this video. We're gonna go a little bit faster here. So the first mindset hack that just dawned on me during my speech class is that people in my audience or people who I interact with in the, the world at large, they care a lot less about how I perform, about the little individual characteristics of what I do than I think they do. And Eleanor Roosevelt put this best. She said, you wouldn't worry so much about what others think of you if you realized how seldom they do. And like I said, this hit me in the face like a ton of bricks when I was in my speech class because everyone was going up and giving their speech in front of the class. And while they did that, I would look at the audience and realize that a lot of people were on their phones, or on Facebook on their laptops, or they look generally bored. And it just kind of dawned on me that if I go up there and give a basically mundane performance, nobody's gonna remember it because they're thinking about themselves. So in my mind, that meant there are one of two possible outcomes. Either I'll give a completely mundane, imperfect, not that great performance, and people will be kind of bored, they'll be polite, and then they'll move on with their lives and they won't remember it at all, or I'll dazzle them there's a much, much less likely chance that I'm gonna do something so stupid, so silly, or so embarrassing that they're going to make fun of me or actually remember it. And once I realized this, I was so much less scared to get up and talk in front of groups or to do anything else. And this leads directly into my second mindset hack, which is to realize that people love confidence. And here's the thing that kind of dawned on me a few years ago. Most people's average everyday experience is kind of mundane, right? There's fun things you do and there are certain amazing days, but work, school, the average human experience is kind of meh, you know, not all that crazy. And people, they're fine with that, but what they want is novelty. What they want is something exciting, something out of the ordinary, something that makes them smile or laugh or makes them happy. And confident people are much more able to deliver that than unconfident people. So here's what I do. When I'm invited to speak in front of an audience or when I have to basically perform, quote unquote, in any way, I picture a stereotypical image of an unconfident person in my mind. I'm just like, what is the complete average person going to do in this situation? Maybe they're gonna have more reserved gestures. They're gonna look back at somebody else who's kind of leading whatever's going on for cues. And overall, they're just not gonna have a whole lot of confidence in whatever they're doing. And how's the audience gonna react to that? Well, one, they're not gonna heckle. They're not gonna laugh. They're just gonna be like, meh, 
and they'll go on with their lives and they won't remember it. Now, here's the key part. Once I have that picture in my head and I realize that the worst possible scenario for that stereotypical person isn't death, isn't heckling, isn't rotten tomatoes, it's just moving on with their lives, I resolve to be better because I know people love confidence. They wanna be happy, they wanna smile, they want something novel. So I step into it. Even if I don't actually feel that I have the skills to pull it off, I just try to do it. For example, uh, my girlfriend dragged me to a Renaissance fair in Minnesota last weekend, and I had a lot of fun, so I won't say dragged, but she brought me to it. And we went to see one of the shows they had at the fair. And I didn't know it at the time, but this show had a lot of audience participation, and I was the lucky or unlucky, however you see it, person who was chosen to go up and do the most stuff on stage. And this culminated with me having to put a bra on my head and give my best evil laugh and then pick a dude up and spin him around. And I was scared, to be honest. And if I had been like 17 years old when this had happened, I would have just refused to go up. But I went up and I looked out at the hundred or so people in the crowd and I realized these people paid money to come here and have fun. And if I'm sheepish, if I put my hands in my pockets and look back too much, they're not gonna have as much fun as if I just completely make a fool out of myself and step into the persona of an actor. Now I'm not an actor, but I can at least try to do it because I know it'll make them happy. All right, so you've got the mindset, you've got the commitment to doing, now let's get into a couple of tactical decisions, actions you can take right now that are gonna help you become more confident. And the first one is to record your accomplishments. Now, you have a couple of different ways you can do this. One way, and I've tried both of these, one works better than the other for me, but one way is to keep a daily accomplishment journal. So maybe you wake up and you have a to-do list every single day. Well, at the end of that day, simply write down what you did in Evernote or a journal that you keep with you uh, all the time that you never throw away. And then when you're facing something you're not confident about, look back through your accomplishment journal and it will remind you that you have overcome so many challenges in the past many of which you didn't think you could do until you achieved them. And that will help you to realize that I am a human being who overcomes challenges. I get stressed, I get scared, but I win more often than I lose. And that is what I'm going to do with this next challenge. Now, this is the exact same mindset that I use with my impossible list. And this is not a daily accomplishment journal, but this is a public list on my website where I list out all of my big goals in life and then I cross them off when I accomplish them. And what I do when I cross them off is I iterate upon those goals and I add the next more difficult goal beneath it. And the key thing here is I'm leaving the goals that I've achieved up there to remind me that I have overcome them even though I was once unable to do them. And now I'm challenging myself to step up and keep doing that in the future. And this helps me to keep my confidence high. And that finally brings us to my last tip for you, which is another tactic. And this is very different and it actually takes the focus off of you. So this is something a personal friend of mine once told me about confidence. And she said, simply speak more slowly and speak less, smile more and put the focus on the other person. Try to be a great listener and try to build up the other person in any other interaction you have. This is a really good tip for building meaningful relationships, for building friendships, and for making other people happy, but it's also going to build your confidence because when you do this, you'll start coming out of your interactions and conversations with other people happy, and they'll seem successful, and you'll realize this was a great conversation and I didn't have to spend any of my effort trying to build myself up or make myself look good. And what this does is it starts to build this internal self-confidence. You can feel really good about yourself without having to boast about your accomplishments or one-up things people say. You just know that you're a confident person and you don't have to try to wear it on your sleeve. So guys, I really hope you found this video useful. I know it was longer than usual, but I really hope you got some value out of it. And like I mentioned earlier on in the video, Charlie over at Charisma On Command has a really great channel full of content like this. But the one video I want you to go watch, it's basically your homework after this video, is his breakdown of Conor McGregor, the UFC fighter's confidence. And he talks about relevant experience and he talks about mindset things. So I think it's a great compliment to this video and I'm gonna have it linked down in the description below. If you like this video, you can definitely leave a comment and if you want me to do more stuff like this in the future, ask questions down in the comments so I know where to put my focus. And beyond that, you can subscribe to this channel to get more content on being a more effective student and heck, human being every single week by clicking right there. And you can also get a free copy of my book on earning better grades by clicking right there. If you wanna watch another video of mine that you might find interesting, check it out right there. And you'll find more useful links down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like to support this channel and thank you so much for watching. See you next week.